greetings to all the viewers. The session is going to cover with the concept called codine. Codine is the class of alkaloid. We are going to discuss about the alkaloid called codine, from where it is originated, and what is the process of structural elucidation followed by laboratory synthesis. How can we, how can we proceed for laboratory synthesis of codine? And eventually, we will go with its applications. This is the way we are going to conduct the session. Let's see. Codine is the opiate alkaloid derived from the opium poppy. From the opium poppy, so many alkaloids will be extracted. Among all, one of the component is codine. So here, opium is uh, scientifically designated as a power somniferum. From this, codine will be extracted. Being it is the natural product, extracted from the natural source. It is primarily used for its analgesic properties. Analgesic, nothing but pain relieving. Wherever we are suffering the pain, like headache, stomach pain will be there, and muscle pain will be there, toothache will be there. Everywhere, uh, we can administrate this codine as a analgesic or else pain relieving agent. Okay. And uh, in addition, it also used for cough and diarrhea. Cough, in the sense, uh, cough tendency, everybody aware about antitussive uh, drug, it will be and a diarrhea. Diarrhea is caused by the continuous vomiting and motions. So that uh, dehydration will be carried, that is diarrhea. In all these things, we can administrate the drug called codine. Codine works by binding to the opioid receptors in the brain, reducing the perception of pain and altering the emotional response to the pain, right? So, uh, whenever we are uh, we are administrating this codine uh, drug, what happens, it will go to the brain and there the receptors which inducing the pain, there it, it is going to bind up so that emotional sense of pain will be suppressed. So, this is the way codine works as an analgesic agent. Key points about the codine. We will go with the, some glance about the codine. Chemical structure. Codine is chemically similar to morphine, but it is less potent. In comparison, the potency, morphine is more potent and some extent its potency will be less. Chemical formula is mentioned as C18, H21NO3. It is the chemical formula. And here we mentioned with its uh, uh, chemical skeleton, right? Chemical skeleton is mentioned over phenantrine skeleton. And uh, moreover, we can say morphine skeleton is present. Only the difference is, in case of morphine, we can find OH group over here. But whenever methyl is substituted with hydrogen so that it will become methoxy, this is the distinguishing factor from morphine. So whenever methoxy is there, we have to treat it as a codine. Whenever hydroxy is there, that is regarded as a morphine, right? This is the way it is polycyclic ring system. How many? One, two, three, four, five ring systems are present. Penta annular, we can say. And uh, here, if we, if we observe, one, two, three, four are six membered rings. And uh, here it is the uh, five membered ring system is there. So that pentacyclic ring system, where we can notice methoxy, hydroxy, and here ether, another nitrogen containing methyl. This is tertiary nitrogen. This is about the skeleton of codine. Let's go with uses. Obviously, we will treat the codine for the relieving of pain, mild to moderate, not severe pains. Whenever the people suffering with the mild to very less to some extent the pain is present so that it is convenient to administrate this codine. And it is used to relieve, uh, uh, relieve the people from the cough conditions. Anti-diarrheal. So diarrhea conditions also minimized by means of this codine metabolism. Codine is metabolized in a liver. Whenever we are consuming, most of the drugs will be Mm, morphalized in liver only. Liver is used to adjust all the things and uh, whatever drugs, whatever medicine we are taking in liver only most probably metabolism get carried so that it will be transformed into morphine which contributes to the analgesic effect. Morphine is the potential analgesic agent and it is also used as the anesthetic agent. So many applications we can find for morphine, right? So that whenever codine administrated, 
uh, it went into the liver. There it get morphalized into the morphine. Individual responses can vary based on the genetic factors and the effect of metabolism. Right. So everybody are administrating, but the effect of working, the uh, way of working mechanism of the action is not similar in all the people. That is because some genetic factors also operated over there. And the rate of metabolism also matter for this uh, effective uh, working of this codine, right? Along with the usage, along with the applicability, we can find the in either side of the coin that is the side effects. There is a problem like a drowsiness. Drowsiness means a sleeping tendency will increase. Suppression of uh, nervous system will be there. Constipation uh, problem will be arised. Nausea, it is related with the lungs and dizziness. That is also the kind of drowsiness only, right? So this is the kind of symptoms we can notice if you are consuming continuously. Whenever it is required, then we have to use so that the uh, optimal usage may not cause any side effects. Continuous usage or else overdosage also can induce such a kind of side effects, Dependence and abuse potential. If the people are continuous or is uh, using in a regular basis, what happens? There is a there is a uh, there is a um, very uh, dangerous effect. We can say that is addictive property. So that uh, there is a large scope for the abuse for this codine regulation. So that in so many countries, codine used as usage is controlled. Controlled usage is measured with the symbol. So whatever whatever requisite quantity, whatever requisite time, both are matter for the usage. Quantity matters and also time of usage also matters for the use. So that we can say controlled usage of the material is most important for this codine. Let's go with another segment called structural elucidation of the codine. Structural elucidation means whenever we are extracting the raw material from the plant, so we don't know what to be extracted, so that we will go for the analysis. So from the crude product, we have to go for step-by-step -step analysis by means of analytical tools in order to identify the chemical structure of the component. So various analytical methods are used to determine the chemical structure in order to confirm the presence of various functional groups over there. Stepwise the process for the elucidation is mentioned over. It's a molecular formula by the spectral or elemental analysis. It is identified that molecular formula will be C18, H21, NO3 is the molecular formula. And molar mass is identified as 299.37 gram per mole. This is the molar mass of the codine. So after getting this uh, minimum uh, identification components, we will go with the functional group analysis where preliminary test will be carried. Alkaloid nature. The Whatever alkaloid you know, if we, if we treat with drug and drop reagent, drug and drop reagent is common for the identification of all the alkaloids. It is the characteristic reaction for the alkaloids. So test solution was taken and drops of drug and drop reagent is added so that it is uh, turned into a brick red color precipitate. Reddish brown color precipitate is formed. That is the characteristic reaction for the presence of alkaloids so that it is a minimum test whether the compound whatever we extracted is alkaloid or not. That identified by means of drug and drug reagent. Later on, phenolic hydroxy. So fundamental reaction for the presence of phenolic hydroxy, aromatic hydroxy, we can say perichloride reagent is also added. Whenever perichloride is added, immediately it will give the blood red color precipitate that indicates the presence of hydroxyl. But intensity of the color is not that extent, just like a morphine. That is because some extent of hydroxy got methylated so that uh, it is protected. It will not give only the uh, hydroxy whatever present over here will go for the perichloride test. So that intensity of the color will be not the extent with the morphine, right? But it will give the perichloride test positive. Let's go with the uh, identification of the functional groups. Methoxy will be there, which is indicated with the blue color shade. 
and the tertiary amine is also present within the compound if nitrogen accompanied by the three alkyl around. So that is indicated with this yellow shade. And the phenolic uh, hydroxyl group is also present over that is mentioned with this pink shade. So this is the way functional groups got identified in the compound called codine. Let's go with the IR spectroscopy. If the compound placed in the IR spectrophotometer, so that we will get the signals in this manner. The signals are mentioned over and absorbance are, are measured in the wave number uh, in the in the units of centimeter inverse. The fundamental peaks are three. One is uh, 3,400 centimeter inverse. You can observe over here. This blue color shade indicates the presence of hydroxyl, the peak whatever represented here, that indicates the presence of hydroxyl 28 to 2950. That is nothing but around 3000. This is the orange color shade, which indicates the presence of CH group. A carbon hydrogen stretching frequency is observed over that is characteristic for aromatic hydrogens over there. In addition, you also find another peak uh, around 1264. So that is the indication for the carbon oxygen characteristic for methoxy. These three peaks indicate the presence of various functional groups over there. IR is the IR is symbol for the identification of functional groups. Whatever functional groups we have, which are measured, which are measured with these signals. Let's go with the proton in mass spectroscopy. Nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy, proton NMR, we are going to study. Various signals are noticed over. If the signal absorbed in the range of 3.7 to 4.2 ppm, that gives the signal for the uh, functional group of uh, hydrogen slaying in methoxy, right? Where can you notice that 3.7 to 4.2, the blue color shade, whatever we mentioned, that indicates methoxy hydrogens, right? Methoxy hydrogens are indicated with the blue shade. And the peaks in the range of 6.5 to 7.5 ppm. That is mentioned with this orange, which is the characteristic for aromatic hydrogens. Aromatic hydrogens are laying in this region. And hydroxyl protons will appear at 4.8 ppm. 4.8 where we can notice this yellow color shade which indicates the presence of hydrogen of hydroxy so that this is a characteristic peak for hydroxyl. Let's go with the amine. Here we already observed there is a tertiary nitrogen containing methyl over there. In methyl group is there that is giving the upfield shift at the range of 2.3 ppm mentioned with the pink color shade. Near to the internal standard so that N methyl hydrogens are laying in the region of 2.3 ppm. This is the way entire uh, HNMR spectrum got uh, explained. Let's go with the proton C13 NMR, where characteristic peaks are two distinguishable peak at the range of 110 to 140 ppm is for the carbons of aromatic ring. Here, if we observe, Aromatic ring only, this, this six-membered ring is aromatic. All the remaining are aliphatic only. We are not finding conjugation over there and Huckel rule may not be satisfied. So that here only the uh, only the aromatic carbons, six carbons are there. They only distinguished by means of the peak uh, in the range of 110 to 140 ppm. Let's go with another signal at the range of 55 to 60 ppm. That is indication for the presence of methoxy. This is the profile for C13 in demand for dying. Let's go with another analytical tool called mass spectroscopy. Mass spectral signals are appeared over here for the codine molecule. Here, the molecular ion peak, which indicated with the M place, molecular ion peak is called parent peak. M by Z, mass by charge peak is mentioned over, that is indicating 299. 299 peak is the indication for what uh, its molecular weight. So that we can confirm its molecular weight is 299 gram per mole. And uh, if you are going to fragment, so fragmentation will give more precise uh, analysis of the compound. So that let's let's uh, fragment at methyl. So if methyl is uh, removed, what happens to 84 uh, fragment peak you can observe. 
and again you are going to fragment uh, this methoxy entirely so that the 216 and fragmentation peak you can notice in such a manner if we proceed for further fragmentation you can you can go for a, any other peaks as well this is the way mass spectroscopy is the characteristic for the identification of its molecular weight let's go with any other tool uh, that is uv visible spectroscopy UV visible spectroscopy is characteristic for presence existence of conjugation, right? So that uh, UV visible for the codine is appeared in the range of 200 to 300 nanometer. That indicates the presence of aromatic ring conjugation. Only the conjugation appeared in this, a, a, neither of the ring system, aliphatic ring system are in the conjugation. Only the possibility is aromatic three double bonds are in conjugation. The distinguishable peak is appeared in the range of 200 to 300 nanometer for the codine molecule that is mentioned over here. This is the way uh, we can go for what the UV visible spectrum. Let's go with any other segment of the session that is called the chemical structure of the codine. Uh, these many tools we uh, consumed, one is uh, molecular formula identification, molecular weight identification followed by we gone through the IR spectroscopy and uh, eventually proton NMR, C13 NMR, UV visible spectroscopy, mass spectroscopy, so many technical tools we, uh, we consumed. Later on, we concluded with the uh, with a few observations over there. The structure of the codine is mentioned as follows. The main skeleton for the compound is morphine. This is the morphine skeleton phenanthrin ring system will be there. Hydroxyl group. If if we are replacing this methoxy with uh, hydroxyl, so that it exactly resembles with the morphine, so that it is almost similar to the morphine. Only the exception is this methyl. This is the distinguishable. This methyl is the distinguishable factor for methyl. Uh, sorry, for diene and morphine, right? So and uh, uh, at the at the third position, methoxy will be there. At the sixth position, hydroxyl will be there. At the 17th position, you can notice a methyl group. This is the way the entire functional groups are mentioned over. And um, codine is the polycyclic structure. Why we are saying polycyclic? If you count one, two, three, four, five. Five ring systems are in the, con uh, in the are, all are fused one, right? So that we can say polycyclic, right? Polycyclic ring system is there and aromatic ring we can notice this is the benzene ring and piperidine ring. If we observe this, uh, six-membered nitrogen containing ring is called a saturated ring is called piperidine and hydroxyl methoxy. Here we can observe the hydroxy and here is the methoxy and NCH3. These are the characteristic features of codine molecule. This is the way chemical structure of the codine got concluded by means of all these analytical techniques. Now, we entered into another segment called laboratory synthesis. We are going to synthesize uh, codine in the laboratory. Its starting precursor will be morphine. Starting with the morphine, we can transform into codine. Very simple. Only the thing hydroxy must be converted into methoxy. But there is a competing factor. Both the hydroxyl are there, right? So that what we have to do, first of all, hydroxyl of the sixth position to be protected. Later on, slowly we have to add methyl on this third position. And the next step, sixth position should be deprotected so that free hydroxy will be appeared again. So we can simply say protection of sixth hydroxy, methylation of third hydroxy, and the deprotection of sixth hydroxy. Three steps are required in order to transform morphine into codine. So this is the way precursor compound will be morphine. Starting with this, we are going to convert into a codine. Starting material will be the morphine and the morphine uh, phenolic hydroxyl group at third position will be there and alcoholic hydroxyl at the sixth position. So two hydroxy are the characteristic functional groups which participate in this synthetic process, right? So in the step one, protection of alcoholic group at the sixth position. That is the reason why we have to treat it with the morphine should be treated with the acidic anhydride. Acidic anhydride, if added, what happens? There are two competing hydroxyls so that both should be acylated. But 
we have to we have to add one mole of that means controlled amount of acetic anhydride so that specifically sixth hydroxy will be protected and uh, not affecting third hydroxy that is purely because nitrogen this nitrogen is uh, very near to this one and moreover it is in the conjugation a more nucleophilic nitro uh, tendency is uh, provided for this uh, hydroxyl so that electrophilic substitution is obviously carried at the position of 6. So that protection at the 6th position hydroxyl is possible by controlled acylation. Later on, move on to step number 2, methylation of phenolic hydroxy. After protecting this 6th hydroxy, we will go for methylation. Whenever methyl iodide is added, only the provision for the reaction at third hydroxy. If it is open, again methyl will go to the sixth position. That's the reason why we protect it here. Later on, methyl iodide is added with this free hydroxy. It will be transformed into the methoxy. This is, this is methylation. This is step number two. Later on, step number three. So, we need to free this hydroxy. The ester should be transformed into hydroxy. This is very simple by hydration process. Whenever water added, ester will be slowly fragmented, giving rise to the hydroxyl and the free release of acetic acid as the byproduct. This is the way step number three will be carried. So, deprotection of the alcoholic group at this position six. So, that hydroxyl will be originated. This is called a codine, right? Uh, the entire process is mentioned in the one single reaction. Morphine to be added, to be uh, go, or to be subjected to protection and deprotection process and uh, eventually subjected to a chemical treatment called methyl iodide and simply converted into codine, which is the compound what we are discussing in the session. Now, we entered into the last segment of the session called applications of the codine. Span across the medicine primarily due to its analgesic, antitussive, and antidiarrheal properties. Three properties we mentioned at the starting point of this, uh, this session only. It is having pain relieving tendency called analgesic. Antitussive means it used to relieve the cough tendency. Antidiarrheal is nothing but which used to minimize the uh, continuous vomiting and motions, which is called uh, diarrhea dehydration process. We can say that tendency also uh, curated by means of this codine, analgesic pain relieving tendency. So, codine is a mild reagent in comparison to the morphine, just to be already mentioned. Mild to moderate pains, not the severe one. Mild to moderate pains included with the, if we are suffering with the muscle pain or else headache or else any toothache if observed, all these can be mitigated by means of codine. And also, its effectiveness get enhanced if you are blending with paracetamol or as ibuprofen. These two are better known for their analgesic properties so that blending of codine with these agents so that its effectiveness will be increased and uh, another important application post surgical pains after the surgery not the major surgery if any minor surgeries we are operating with in that minor surgery after the surgery obviously there will be a healing healing requires some time uh, during that time we need to we need to experience the pain right at that condition we can conveniently consume this codine in order to avoid that uh, post-surgical pains. This is the way we concluded with the entire session. Initially, introduction part is provided for the codine from where we are going to extract. Later on, what will be the feature, structural elucidation features by means of analytical techniques? Later on, how can we synthesize the codine within the laboratory? And finally, what way we can go for its applications, where we can apply this in uh, medical grounds. All these uh, topics got uh, introduced in the session. Hopefully, the session is informative. Thank you very much for your patient listening. This is Dr. Kavita Kothiredi Kota. Thanks a lot.